Razor, come on, man. Take it easy on these guys. They've had enough. So today, Razor hits the industry with the quick three-piece. Not content to rest on the success of the Razor Viper or the Huntsman TE keyboard, they're back with the Viper Ultimate. And not only is it wireless, it's got new sensor technology inside as well. They're taking the fight right to the G Pro wireless with this one. This might be the one. It might be. There is so much good stuff going on in this mouse. It's going to leave a lot of companies playing catch up. You ready? Let's go. Today's video is brought to you by Lethal Gaming Gear, your new US-based source for aftermarket mouse glides. Both CorePad and Tiger Gaming are in stock and shipping now for all major mouse models with hyperglides coming very soon. Because Lethal is based in the US, they offer one day processing and one to three day shipping in the continental US for much lower than the competition. More models are being added all the time, but if you need something you don't see, hit up the contact form and request stock for your specific needs. And don't forget to use code BADSEEDTECH for 10% off your first order. For quality mouse skates, fast, hit the link in the description below or check them out at LethalGamingGear.com. Yo, I'm Brian P. You're watching Bad Seed Tech and today we're checking out the Viper Ultimate Lightweight Wireless Gaming Mouse from Razer. For transparency, they did send this out for review, but as you should know by now, it doesn't affect my review in any way. So the Viper Ultimate has very familiar looks because we literally just got introduced to the Viper back in the beginning of August. As a refresher, it measures 126 millimeters long, 62 millimeters wide at the front, 66 millimeters at the rear, and 60 millimeters wide at the grip with a height of 38 millimeters. They were able to maintain a lightweight too at 74 grams, only up five grams from the wired version of the Viper. I don't want to spend a lot of time today talking about ergonomics or different size shape comparisons of a bunch of different mice. All that information is in the video I did on the original Razer Viper if you want to go check that out. I want to focus on the wireless aspect today, mainly the improvements that Razer has made to their wireless technology and the new sensor because there's a lot of innovation in this mouse. It's still a true ambi mouse with side buttons on both sides and they're also using the same fast optical 70 mil switch as we saw on the OG Viper as well. The only tactile difference I can feel on the Ultimate versus the Viper is that the scroll wheel on the Ultimate seems to have a bit higher tension than the Viper. You can get this a couple different ways. The mouse alone will run you $129.99 US. The charging base is $49.99 or you can get both bundled together for $149.99. The base serves a couple purposes. One, it acts as a wireless extender. The wireless dongle inserts right into the top here. It's got a sticky silicone base like their mouse bungees, so you can stick and re-stick this as necessary. It also charges, obviously. When you park the mouse on it, it will indicate by color the current charge level of the mouse. Battery life is a crazy 70 hours with the RGB disabled. I can't tell you what that battery life looks like with RGB enabled because I only managed to run this mouse down once and I accidentally left it on the charger. Charge is really fast too. Razer quotes five hours of playtime for every 10 minutes of charge. When the base is not charging, it has its own chroma settings and the included cable is a paracord light cable, but it's a thicker, looser weave than the Speedflex cable on the OG Viper. The cable has a proprietary connector and if you find yourself in a real pinch and you have to play right now, you can run the mouse wired as well. They say too that this wireless base platform will be universal going forward. So I would expect to see a lot of the classic Razer shapes coming out with their new wireless technology. Before we get into the wireless and sensor tech, I want to talk about the new feet. These are redesigned to accommodate the charging cable and charging base. They're 100% PTFE. They're pretty thick. They've got rounded edges. They feel as high quality as any aftermarket feet I've used, and they glide much better than the stock feet on the OG Viper. The sensor here is new. It's called the Focus Plus, and while Razer recognizes that no one really plays at those crazy high DPI levels, this sensor is rated up to 20,000. But more importantly than chasing high speed, they really put a focus on dialing in accuracy at low DPI. People sometimes forget, myself included, that whether or not a mouse has software, there always exists firmware code that helps that sensor and that hardware communicate with the PC. As such, Razer's got three new technologies built into their firmware here to help increase sensor performance. Smart tracking automatically calculates the liftoff distance for your surface and adjusts accordingly. Asymmetric cutoff allows you to dial in both the liftoff and the landing distance, or the level at which the mouse begins to track the surface again to reduce cursor drift when you place your mouse back down. Motion Sync feeds cursor location info to your PC at a rate more in tune with how your PC pulls information. In theory, this should present more accurate cursor tracking and positioning. Okay, so obviously that's all Razer marketing copy paraphrased and repackaged by me. What I'm gonna tell you is this. I've been off FPS for a few weeks. Been driving in the sim a lot, playing a lot of Breakpoint, barely even opened Kovacs except for the DM5 review. So by all accounts, I was cold, right? 
I sat down, set the sensor to 800, and was hitting near top scores in one wall six targets TE. I opened Synapse, I dialed the DPI to 1000 straight up, went back, beat my long-standing PR that I set with the MM710, then I smoked that score on the next run. That's as real as it gets right there. This mouse is wireless. It's about 20 grams or 28% heavier, and I've been maining the MM710, and I cleared two PRs with barely any warm-up. Crazy. Was using the Thor mouse pad, by the way. Love that thing. I don't know if you're getting it from my subtle enthusiasm, but the wireless feels really good here. They call it their hyperspeed wireless, and they claim it to be 25% faster than any other wireless out there. I don't know if that's true or not. What I can tell you is that I've spent loads of time with the Mamba wireless and the Lancehead wireless in the past, and this feels better. One of the first things I noticed was wake on sleep time. Their previous wireless mice had a noticeable delay when waking up that wasn't really an issue for me until I spent some time with Logitech wireless, and then it felt really slow going back. Not the case here. This thing is ready when you are. Whether I play with the wireless dongle in the back of the PC, or in the base, I see no difference in performance whatsoever. You can also set sleep time and the percentage of battery remaining before the mouse goes into low power mode. It does warn that you'll see reduced tracking speed and sensor acceleration to preserve battery, but in practice, I didn't really feel any difference. The reduction is minimal. You can also store the wireless dongle inside the mouse itself, and there is a DPI indicator LED on the bottom of the mouse, as well as an on-off switch. So, value. The dock is cool. I probably wouldn't pay $50 for it after the fact, but if you're gonna buy anyway, I don't really think going that extra 20 bucks to get the dock is too big of a stretch. Nonetheless, we're gonna compare mouse versus mouse. And that mouse comes packaged at 130. That's a lot for a mouse. I'm not gonna try to minimize that. It's positioned in a way to go head to head with the G Pro Wireless and it doesn't pull any punches getting there. That mouse at the time of this video is just under the $130 mark. It's held the throne for a while now too. In a direct comparison, price is either a draw or a little more for the Viper depending on if you get the dock. Razor wins in weight, battery life, stock feet, and it's got the optical switches versus those 50 mil Omrons that have been known to be problematic in the past. That's what I personally know. Razer demoed some tests that showed their hyperspeed wireless and their sensor tracking outperforming the light speed wireless of the Logitech. Now, obviously, I don't have access to that same testing software to duplicate those results. I've tried to use the G Pro wireless before. I've owned it for a really long time. When I was palm grip, it was just too small for me. Playing fingertip now made for a more fair comparison, so I logged a few hours of testing on each one, and here's where it lands for me. When I have a few targets clustered close together that I have to move between, both mice perform about the same. When I have to take a long swipe to land on a single target, the Razer Viper is more consistent for me. In training like Kovacs, where it's a blend of both situations, I score higher consistently with the Viper. Whether that comes down to sensor tracking or click timing from the optical switches, I don't know, but it is what it is. I also find my Viper glides better on the Thor pad than the G Pro Wireless, even with the Tiger Arc pads installed. Here's a sound test between the two. I gotta say, when you use a word like elite or ultimate or whatever in your name, you better bring it. And between the weight, the shape, the coating, the fast optical switches, the fast wireless, and the very consistent predictable sensor performance, they did. Razer definitely brought it with this one. I love this mouse. It's gonna be spending a lot of time on my main desk. I have one more short update video I wanna do on the retail hottie, and then I'll be bringing the year-end top five ranked mouse video to help you make a choice before we get into the holidays. As always, any questions, hit me in the comments or drop by the Discord. And that's it for this time. I'm Brian P. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button, hit that sub button. And until next time, stay up.